This is my Intel test bench right here. It's got two components on there. I said I need to change out. The Asus PSU, no, that's a motherboard. The Asus motherboard needs to take a flying leap and the EK AIO also needs to GTFO. So I've taken the opportunity to try out Singularity's new test bed deal that they sent me. So I've already put it together. It's actually just two pieces. It's <laughs> unlike the other, pro the Phantom 2 we put together. But there's some things I gotta sort of work around. But the whole point of this video, honestly, is gonna be, I still get people sending me questions asking me, can I change hardware or motherboards or whatever and still keep Windows? Like, can I take my drive from one system and put it in another? If so, how does that work? I'm gonna have to do that today, so we might as well take you guys along for the ride. But first, let's put this together, because it's got some nuances. Hey, Day. 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 What? We got work to do. Yeah, I'm playing World of Warships. Yeah. World of Warships is the free to play naval strategy game where you command the most iconic and famous warships from World War I and World War II recreated with stunning detail and accuracy. Build your fleet while participating in various game types while upgrading your ship's arsenal along the way. New players who sign up using my link below will receive an exclusive starter pack to get you up and running quickly by receiving 7 days premium time, 1 million credits, 300 doubloons, and the tier 5 premium ship, the Exeter. So what are you guys waiting for? Start sinking ships with World of Warships by heading to the description below and getting your freebies. So this is the test bench, test bench, test bench power board V1.0. So that means there will be some changes I'm sure coming to it. Anyway, this is my MSI mag or MPG um, edge motherboard for a Z790. It's fine, um, perfectly fine for a motherboard and it's not ASUS, so that's great. Um, the other thing too is, as you can see, kind of like the Phantom, the power board is also sort of the chassis. It's what the motherboard's mounting to. So we've got, <laughs> This kind of seems like the most unnecessary power board yet, to be honest, because the power supply is right here. So they're going into there to come back out to there to go into there. So it really doesn't seem, I guess with the exception of the 12 volt high power right here, that could just be like, boop. It really doesn't seem necessary. But regardless, um, there's a couple of things I want to point out here. One, this, th there's three mounts right here for 140 millimeter fans. So these only work with 140s on this side. You can see the little cutouts right there. But the reason why I have this giant Strix card out, it's the biggest card we have. There are bigger cards out from like Gigabyte. But I wanted to see like, can this, see if I mount that, if I were to mount that down, look, you see how the card slightly overhangs where the fans would go? So I, that's kind of a problem. The other thing too, is I want to take this AIO right here, which is just, this is just a basic little Cooler Master 280 Tech thing. Nothing crazy, it's brand new, we didn't even use it. Actually came out of Phil's NRP 200 Max, the second one, that we ended up not using it because we took it out and did custom water cooling, so it's never been used. So I'm gonna change the fans out on this and just do something cool. I can mount them here. These, these holes right here have rail mounts for 120 and two, uh, 140 fans. And the same thing exists on this side. The problem is I have the power supply going right here. So I wanna still have air cooling going across some of the motherboard components because they still need air, even if we have uh, the CPU being water cooled. So if I put it up here, then it's just gonna blow into the power supply and that won't make any sense. If I put it down here, it's just gonna blow into the graphics card, which still means that air isn't gonna make its way to the motherboard. And I don't wanna count on any blow through style air coolers because they're not gonna blow directly on the motherboard. But I have to be able to account for large graphics cards because when next gen cards come out, um, this will be one of our test bench platforms that we test the cards on. So I have to be able to mount the card and not have fans there in the way. Fortunately, it looks like because of the M.2 spacing right here on this top slot, it pushes everything down one slot, which means I can mount a 280 right there and still clear the graphics card. Thank goodness for that. So anyway, this is the test bench, test bench we've been using right here. It's just the open air, the open bench, I think it's called. It's a nice unit, I really like it. Um, my only problem is it's just, I don't like how everything's kind of built up so high. I liked how this is sort of low and a low footprint. So I gotta transfer basically just the drive and the power supply and the CPU out of that into here. But if we wanna test graphics cards and especially next gen cards and not have them be bottlenecked in any way, I'm probably gonna to have to move to 14th gen. So I might just grab a 14900K and throw it in here. 
But with that said, the last thing too, is since none of this is actually mounted down, the bottom of the test bench does have a giant opening, as you can see, to reach the back when it comes to, to mounting things to it. It's a couple of extra mounts on the bottom of this thing. I'm not even sure what they are. All right, the other thing I need to do is uh, take this power supply off here and see if the cables they sent work with the HX PSUs. I know that Seasonic is an ODM for Corsair for some of their power supply lines, but I think it might only be for the HX stuff and not the RX or RM power supplies, which is why it didn't work with the other one with the small Phantom 2. So let me get this off of here real quick and then see what we got. So yeah, I don't have any Seasonic based PSUs that I can use their sleeved cables on, so that's fine. I'm probably honestly not gonna even use the power board on this. <laughs> I, it's unfortunate. I could change the power supply later if I want to, I guess, but I'm just gonna have them run from the PSU to the areas they need to be, you know. It's a test bench. It's not a, a full-time build, so it really doesn't matter. Like, I mean, I guess I could do that or something with it. <laughs> maybe I'll just do that. Yeah, maybe I'll just do that. So I'm not putting anything on this side, so I can just have them all like zip tied back here. But enough, we don't need to talk more about this build. The point is about the Windows process. So enough of this. This is just for the hardware junkies like me that get off on hardware and don't care about the rest of it. Um, we'll now just fast forward the rest of this. Okay, it's assembled. So I had these fan grills, which are good here to keep me from, you know, sticking my fingers in there, but I only had two, so I could stick my fingers in those. <laughs> so now I have cross flow going across the motherboard components, which I actually did not have in the other, uh, well, I did, I guess I did, the AIO was blowing on it. Whatever, the AIO is way down here now. Fortunately, the highest point is in the tubing and the top radiator rows are above the pump. So we shouldn't have any uh, cavitation issues there. And as you can see, the Strix fits. And that's all we need this for. This card is the, the, this card has really just been relegated to the does it fit? If it does, then great. If not, then the thing is too small to fit a big card. So now I'm gonna take this thing out of here and I'm gonna throw in a much more reasonable sized card like this one, the Founders Edition 4080 Super. I mean, this thing really just is, that looks even nicer because it's all black <laughs> without all the stupid blue and red. So down right there, there's dip switches that for both fan and pump, you can switch between the motherboard input or the, um, the little knobs that are built into the board here. So it's cool because I can switch back and forth now on RGB pumps and fans to go between motherboard control or just manual dialing, which that alone is awesome for this. This right here is just a power supply jumper, where if I switch that over, then it's just like when we take off the 24 pin and put the jumper on the end and then turn on the power supply switch and then I can like prime pumps and stuff. You can now turn on the power supply through that toggle and if I need to have the power supply on for testing something on the power board or a pump priming or whatever, I can do that, which is very neat. Okay, let's take this chunk of power station stuff into the office and see if it even works. Okay, we're about to get our first test as a test bench because the motherboard does not turn on and I don't think this has anything to do with the power board. I, this was a board, this board was the one that I initially thought that I killed when, we dro when I dropped the, I almost said we, I'm the one responsible, but when the, whatchamacallit, got dropped behind it, the metal plate when I was building my friend's computer. And it worked fine after that for a while and then, if I remember correctly, we started having some weirdness with this. So I do have a gigabyte board that I'm gonna throw in here instead. Um, but it shouldn't be that hard. I just unplug everything from it and take it out. It's, and then I have to change over the AIO. That's gonna be the worst part. All right, well, one motherboard swap later. Let's see what happens. Same thing. Resets power, I have them backwards. <laughs> I was like, let me just try reset. Okay, so it's gonna go right into booting Windows. So what you can't see down here. So we're gonna, okay, now we're back into the video that I wanted to shoot. So it's just gonna go right into getting devices ready. So as you can see here, it's basically what Windows is doing, and I'm hooked up to the internet too, uh, is it's basically going, hey, what basic drivers do we have that'll work? Like, let's, what devices are new? So it's gonna be like, this is a different CPU, this is a different drive, this is a different graphics card, all that stuff. And it's gonna automatically start installing basic drivers to get the system up and running. So it might reboot when it does that process, 
But it's also gonna be very important, I think, once you get your drive into your new system and uploading or running the OS, it's gonna probably reboot right now, to go and download the drivers fresh, like your graphics driver, your chipset drivers and all that stuff and start all over as if it were a first build. The difference is we're gonna be able to go right into Windows and it will work. Now here's the best part about this. It doesn't matter if you're going from an Intel system to an Intel system or Intel to AMD or vice versa. Windows is smart enough now, and I guess it still says ASUS because that's just what we named it when we did it. So I'm gonna have to fix that. But as you can see, everything is currently on and working right now, but it's in a more basic state. Now, the one thing that might happen is you might notice after a couple reboots down here, it's gonna say activate Windows. The motherboard itself is the number one component that it looks for saying, is it a new system? When you get like a, an SI build or like from HP or Dell, Alienware slash whatever, OEM, ODM, the, you, may, you won't even get a Windows key with your build anymore because the key is burned in and, and basically DRM'd to the motherboard. So when you change the board and then you take that drive and you stick it on another board, it no longer recognizes that board, which means you'll have to buy a copy of Windows. It's also incredibly weird that this RAM only seizures when it gets into an OS. So thanks Asus Aura for permanently destroying the RGB on this RAM, the 6,000 megahertz RAM kit. We did nothing. Aura just one day decided to do this to it. Okay, it says we cannot activate Windows on this device because the product key was already activated on another device. If you think that you use, wasn't used on another device, this is where you activate by phone. Okay, so we're gonna activate by phone. All right, so United States, click next. Here's our installation ID, which we have made impossible for you to see. And I'm gonna go ahead and call that phone number. We're gonna go 855-801-0109. Looking forward to helping you today. Are you? Are you calling to activate Office or Windows? Need help with remote desktop licenses or something else? Activate Windows. I can send you a link to our smartphone activation experience. Would it be okay for me to send you that link via text message? Yes. I'm not sure I understood what you said there. Yes. Would you like to receive a text? Yes. Okay, sending you a text now. So once you put in the confirmation ID for all nine boxes, it'll say, how many computers have you installed with this copy of the software? Computer's like, I'm watching you, Windows <laughs> Defender, I'm watching you. <laughs> Ethics discussion aside, you say one. The reason why I'm saying one is because I'm removing that drive from one computer to another and that other computer has been dismantled. So ethically, I feel fine with saying one because it's going to one computer. The same computer as far as I'm concerned. The computer for me is the drive, not the parts. So hit submit. It says you have installed one computer with this copy of software. Hit next, boom, it now gives us our enter confirmation ID here. So our installation ID, now we put in the numbers that's on the smart. You can't see it, but it's on there. So I put in those numbers and then we'll basically be done at that point. So you, it depends on where you wanna get Windows from. There's lots of places you can get Windows from. I use legit copies of Windows. I just use the same key in my system that I'm keeping it on. And then when I change components, I just do this reactivation product and I process and I always say one because that activation key is not being used on more than one system at a time. So it's really an ethics discussion. You all can have that conversation down below. I'm going to go ahead and remove myself now and I'm going to continue to put in these codes and show you that everything's good. And that'll be it. I, it the old days of trying to move a drive to another system and having it just completely bork or bootloader fail and just be like, start to load and go blue screen or start to load and then do boot loop hell. Like those days are gone. As much as I think Microsoft has done some pretty crappy things over the years, the one thing they have done that I agree with is the fact that they have made it so much more painless to transfer your drive over to a different computer. It, it sucks when you go, you upgrade your hardware. Specifically, it's gonna be the motherboard. The motherboard is the thing that you're all done. The motherboard's gonna be the one thing that gives you the biggest problem. And also too, the last thing we need to do, okay, so just to finish up our conversation right there, that's literally it. Take your drive, put it in another system, boot Windows, let it figure itself out, go in, reinstall your chipset drivers and stuff that come with your new motherboard, specifically the motherboard, maybe driver for your video and all that sort of stuff, maybe network cards or whatever, and then reactivate Windows. That's really what it comes down to. Um, but the last thing I need to do here, which is the most important mod on the entire test bench, <clears throat> excuse me, threw up a little in my mouth with the thought of this, but it's convert it to RGB. 